So when you look into your Hadoop ecosystem, you have When you look into your Hadoop ecosystem, one One second, Aladdin. Just try restarting the application. Maybe it will help. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it's working. So when you see your uh, Hadoop ecosystem, you you understand as part of the Hadoop ecosystem, you have components like. HDFS, you have MapReduce, these two we technically call it to be Hadoop which implicitly means core and then we have something called Pig, Hive, we have Scoop, we have uh, Uzi, we have Flume, we have Zookeeper, 
Apart from this, uh, if you see, we have other components like, uh, we don't call them as components, but something like yarn, spark. You see many as part of this ecosystem. Many components as part of the Hadoop ecosystem. And these are being divided into different layers. We have storage. And on the top, we have something called processing. And on the top, we have something called access. And on the top, we have something called, what is that? Management. And on the top, we have something called analytics. All these comes under the concept of data only. So you have data storage, data processing, data access, data management, and data analytics. So these components, whatever you are seeing, these fit into one of these layers. Now, why we are discussing this aspect is, all these components, whatever been mentioned here, all these are a part of Apache. either as top level or uh, top level projects or sub projects as part of Apache. You know very well, all these are open source. So as a user, as a user, you go and download each component and try to set up or try to integrate to the existing uh, setup is definitely going to be a challenging thing. I want you to understand this point to Ladin. You go to Apache. Uh, org if you go to apache.org you go and see here projects and you see all these are the projects by name okay you can um, see here projects um, Let me show you projects by name. One second, yeah. Projects by by category, yeah. You see, under big data, I don't know whether you are noticing this or not. Under big data, we have 39 projects. Build management, we have 21. Cloud, we have 13. Content based, we have 17. And database based 25. Like this, you see Hadoop based, we have 4. HTTP, we have, like this, we have category wise, if you see. I think you are uh, noticing these things. All these are the projects. Okay. And these are being categorized based on big data. In the, in the scope of big data, we have 39 projects. And most of these projects are at the top level projects at Apache. What do you mean by top level project? I mean, these are the projects which are in existence independently at Apache. But some projects you see, they are in the incubating stage. I think you noticed here, they are in the incubating stage, initial stage. But if you see, you click on any of this project, you will be seeing, you will be seeing, you, you, if you go to this one, uzi.apache.org. 
and you go to any other say for example kafka you see kafka.apache.org that is what i mean by that is what i mean by a top level project at apache every project which is considered as a top level project is going to come with its independent url that is what the indication so you see kafka.apache.org pig.apache.org and hive.apache.org zookeeper.apache.org flume.apache.org that is what i mean by the top level project at apache you may ask me one thing shrinivas why we are discussing all these things the reason when each project is an independent project at apache independent project at apache then each project will have its own life cycle its own life cycle i mean releases the development of this project which is independent at apache is going to happen independently so it will have its own releases maybe it starts with 1.0 then goes to 1.1 1.2 1.3 it keeps going so when each project has its own release every release is not compatible with every release of hadoop i mean core please try to understand this one carefully every release of these projects are not compatible with every release of hadoop hadoop has its own releases hadoop uh, uh, you, when you go to when you go to your hadoop.apache.org it has got its own releases now you look at uh, learn about if you go and see hadoop apache 3.0 you see that one here hadoop apache that is apache hadoop 3.0 it has uh, its own releases before 2.0 and before that 1.0 1.1 1.2 and then 2 then and then now it is 3 so every release of hadoop is not compatible with every release of these top level projects under big data category so identifying which version of this project is compatible with which version of hadoop and uh, download that version and integrate with your uh, hadoop core to form your hadoop ecosystem is definitely going to be a huge challenge to uh, the users to set up the hadoop ecosystem that is the reason why you have the organizations like cloudera hortonworks and then you have something called uh, um ibm in the form of big insights earlier uh, even intel used to have but now intel have, they have closed that and uh, they are a part of cloud era now so these are the major players in the big data space where they are taking the pain of creating a bundle by setting up all the by you know putting all the compatible components together and uh, make a bundle so that this bundle can be set up easily by anyone that is the reason why we prefer to go with one of these bundles now i think you got the understanding 
how cloudera hortonworks ibm big insights and all these companies came into existence and what they do basically right so let it be from cloudera or hortonworks or from anyone your hadoop your hadoop will be in one of the three forms stand alone mod these are the modes in which hadoop exists pseudo cluster mode and then fully distributed mode hadoop can be in one of these three modes either it is provided by um hortonworks or cloudera or ibm big insights whoever hadoop can only be in one of these three modes stand alone mode pseudo cluster mode and fully distributed mode you take the stand alone mode stand alone mode in the stand alone mode you see only your hadoop core you will have only hadoop core that is where you have your hdfs and mapreduce and this is to basically this is to basically quickly test your map reduce jobs the only purpose of this stand alone mode is to quickly test your map reduce jobs when your intention is only to test your map reduce jobs then it is good that you go with your with your uh, stand alone mode and how you set up the stand alone mode you go to hadoop.apache.org you go over there when you go to hadoop.apache.org you have something called download when you see the download you have all the versions here what you need that you can select and download so when you are downloading you usually download the binary not the source you want to download the source and build it from the source that is also fine but usually we download the binary and we just uh, extract it we set up a java home and hadoop home that's it you are done hadoop home is where you have extracted your binary and java home is where you have set up your uh, java that's it these are the only two things that we need in order to make your stand alone mode to come into existence so what needs to be done so you only need to download download hadoop x that is either 2.1 or 2 or 3 whatever the version you need dot tar dot zz this is a file which you can download from hadoop dot apache dot org and then you extract it and you set hadoop home hadoop underscore home where you have extracted that you set it as hadoop home then you also set java home once you are able to do these two you will be able to conveniently work with your uh, because all the map reduce libraries and all needed and uh, your hadoop i was using i think you remember i was using here hadoop i was using my hadoop commands right hadoop jar uh, and hadoop uh, fs so those things can be used by you directly but you will not be having anything called hadoop distributed file system usually you will be uh, working with 
you look at this one here hadoop fs hyphen ls like how you are saying this one so your hadoop is going to become accessible because as part of this you will be seeing when you set up your hadoop home you will also be seeing when you set up your hadoop home you will also be seeing all the binaries that are there a part of your bin so you will be able to access those things uh, when you when you set up your hadoop home you will be able to access your hadoop that is a binary inside your bin file uh, inside your bin folder so when you set up your hadoop home you will be able to access your hadoop and all these things including your java home but this is only to because you have only two components here now one is your hdfs and the other one is your mapreduce the only core purpose of uh, setting up this is to um, quickly test your mapreduce jobs whatever you have developed uh, you want to test those things quickly and see how what is the input you are giving and what is the output coming in order to quickly evaluate these two things you will be usually working with your hadoop uh, uh, the hadoop setup whatever this is what we call it to be stand alone mode and whose sole purpose is to quickly test your mapreduce jobs nothing more than that we don't have any other usage other than that so once you are able to set this you can also see hadoop and uh, you press enter so along with fs you also can see zar dist cp uh, and then you have um, trace you can see here hadoop uh, version it is going to tell you what version of uh, you can see that here this was run using your which one opt cloudera parsels cdh 5.11 by using your hadoop uh, common 2.6 so you take any of these bundles because this is a fully distributed mode this is a fully distributed mode is a full fledged cluster this is it is not a stand alone mode so you see uh, inside every bundle because these players are not developing hadoop components they are directly taking from uh, apache only they are not developing anything on their own what max they are developing is they are developing a layer with which all these components can be integrated well only those kind of uh, uh, you know few um, uh, components or entities they are developing but rest of all the stuff they are extracting it from uh, apache only they are not developing anything on their own they are in fact they are using the same components what uh, apache has developed they are just trying to use those components to build either a pseudo cluster or even a fully distributed mode hope you got the understanding of uh, what is a pseudo cluster or i mean sorry stand alone mode any question you have uh, radan <clears throat> uh, yeah i just want to ask you so this is uh, the installation that you show me to download hadoop uh, whatever version tar, tar gz file extracted i can do that on my uh, personal computer right absolutely absolutely so on my just open just open the terminal and i can install it say on my uh, uh, ubuntu right now i can install it uh, uh, hadoop right absolutely you just need to download okay. this uh, you just i think you are seeing here hadoop 3.0 that is what i told hadoop x and x can be yeah yeah got it got it dot tar dot gz this file you download you extract that file and you set up your hadoop home and also you set up your java underscore home where you have uh, installed your java on your machine okay when these two are being okay. set up you will be able to uh, set up your uh, hadoop uh, stand alone mode but whose purpose is very limited whose purpose is very very limited and uh, you will not be seeing any advantage because we don't have other components also we just have hdfs and a mapreduce 
and that to be HDFS is not going to be the true HDFS. You will not have a true HDFS because this being standalone, it works only on one. So directly or indirectly, I say, I say, in the other terminology, I say, there exists one JVM. For standalone mode, you will be having only one JVM. This JVM is nothing but the JVM with which we run MapReduce job. You remember in the last discussion, I bought a few things to your notice. Hadoop, entire Hadoop runs on master slave architecture where under HDFS you have a master called name node and number of slaves called uh, data nodes. So in Hadoop, you see five demons. And those five demons are name node, a backup to the name node called secondary name node and then we have data nodes okay we call data node only and then we have job tracker under job tracker we have task tracker or we call task trackers so these five whatever we are seeing here these are called these are called your demons. We call them as demons. Where this is the master and this is the slave. You can have one master and a number of slaves. Same like this is the master and this is the slave. So we can have any number of slaves, but master will be only one. So these five are technically called as Hadoop demons. And each, in order to make, you know very well what is a demon. What is a demon? The background process. Pardon? Pardon? Background process. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, demon being a background process, demon being a background process, so this should run. And where this runs? This runs inside the JVM. So, if these five demons need to run, what are required? Five JVMs are required. In a pseudo cluster mode, in a pseudo cluster mode, these five JVMs will be running on same machine. One machine, all the five demons are going to run. That is what we call it to be pseudo cluster. In a fully distributed mode, these demons are being set up on the respective machines with uh, the needed resources so that uh, they can address crunching a huge volumes of data. When it is a pseudo cluster, it is just to do the experimentation. We have everything in the pseudo cluster. We have everything in the pseudo cluster. But only a, a few limitations we have. All demons are going to run on the same machine, that is one. Second, we will not be having multiple data nodes. We can have only one data node because that being a single machine, we cannot set up multiple data nodes. There is no point setting up multiple data nodes because if the machine is down, all the data nodes are down. So there is no point maintaining your replication or backup. That is the reason why we will not be having multiple data nodes. We'll be having only one. We'll be having only one data node. And that itself, that is why we cannot see replication except a few minor things, your pseudo cluster and fully distributed mode are exactly the same. We have only minor differences. We cannot see the replication and all the uh, demons are going to run on the same machine. So we can process only limited amount of data because of not having replication, 
your data is not safe if that uh, node is down for any reason or if the machine is down the entire cluster becomes inaccessible so except a few minor differences be, uh, between your um, uh, pseudo cluster and a fully distributed mod rest of all the same when it comes to the services or working with the components it is almost the same no much difference so when these five demons are going to be set up on individual machines um, where you can have this is one server where only name node is been set up i have one more where secondary name node is been set up i have one more that is where job tracker is been set up usually these are been set up on uh, high configured uh, high end machines or high end servers and you have your data node and the task tracker data node and the task tracker usually these are been set up on the normal machines your data node and the task tracker going to exist coexist on the same node usually so these can be any in number so this is what we call it to be your fully distributed mode where your respective demons are going to run on the respective machines so hope you got all the uh, understandings of the three modes in which your hadoop is uh, possible or hadoop setup is possible so when it comes to cloudera when it comes to cloudera you see both because cloudera will not be uh, providing you uh, your your uh, stand alone mode that you can directly download it from uh, hadoop.apache.org extract it set your hadoop home and uh, um, set your hadoop home and your java home you are done so cloudera and all these companies only provides you a pseudo cluster and fully distributed mode pseudo cluster and fully only these two been provided so even when you go to your uh, uh, your site cloudera.com when you go to your cloudera.com i think you go to the i hope you you are seeing here downloads where you see quick start vms quick start vms are just nothing but uh depending on what you need virtual box vmware kvm or docker image you select vmware and so go there and you give all your details and say continue you will be able to you will be able to download you will be able to download the uh the image compatible the, the vm compatible image because you can have your you can have your image in one of these either a, a virtual box compatible image or vmware compatible image or kvm compatible image or directly a docker image <coughs> <coughs> depending on what environment is available on your machine if you have set up your virtual box then you can download the virtual box compatible image if you have down if you have set up your vm player or vmware fusion then you will be able to download vmware compatible image and then uh, that is where they are saying here cloudera quick start vms that is single node cluster single node cluster that is what i call it to be what is that we are calling it as single node cluster or pseudo cluster sudo the, the term sudo is apt for the reason it works and behave exactly like your cluster with minor differences that is the reason why we call it as a cluster but we call it as a single node cluster where all the components are available and you see the full fledged functionality but the only thing is replication we cannot see we cannot have multiple data nodes because it is a single node and there is no point setting up multiple uh, data nodes because 
If the machine is down, all the nodes will be down. All the data nodes will be down. Right? So these are the three modes in which you can also see here a Cloudera manager. You can download the Cloudera manager. And uh, I think you noticed here on this one it is uh, 5.11, which has been set up, the fully distributed mode. And you see here, depending on what you need, you can uh, you can go and get that. You can uh, give all your details and you can get your Cloudera manager. Once you set up the Cloudera manager, you can uh, set up uh, your entire Hadoop cluster using your Cloudera manager. Cloudera Manager makes it easy to manage Hadoop deployments of any scale in production where you can quickly deploy, configure and monitor your cluster through an intuitive UI complete with uh, rolling upgrades, backup and disaster recovery and customizable alerting. All these possible with your Cloudera Manager. So once you set up Cloudera Manager, you will be able to uh, set up all the other components on the nodes you like. So I'm going to show you. Don't worry for that. We are going to see how you set up, uh, you know, the Cloudera Manager, and using the Cloudera Manager, how you are going to set up the uh, other components, and um, how you decide uh, to make these components exist on the cluster, uh, how you balance these things, all those aspects we see. How we do the backup, how we make the disaster recovery. Though these are the small concepts, but we need to learn, we need to know. Maybe concepts wise, they are huge in number, but they are not massive concepts. So you can uh, uh, go through those components or concepts very easily. So you need not worry for that. I hope you are pretty clear with whatever we discussed now. You have any questions, please feel free to ask. Otherwise, we move on to the next one. No, just to summarize. So Cloudera Manager is practically like a user interface, right? Exactly. So you install it on your you install it on your virtual machine, and through Cloudera you then install Hadoop and manage it, like add files, whatever, delete files, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. So That's pseudo great, cluster, yeah. pseudo cluster is a complete bundle, which we get in the form of an image. Okay. So these images are available for different, different. For KVM, you have for VMware and for VirtualBox, Oracle VirtualBox, or even you can have a Docker image. Okay, because Docker is also picking up uh, these days. It's been widely used in the industry. So you can have one of these four. You can have a Docker image, you can have KVM, VMware, and virtual box uh, all these one of these things so depending on the environment you have on your machine you can download say if you have a vm player i'm going to show you don't worry for that i'm going to show you this i think you noticed here vmware uh, vmware workstation I think you noticed VMware workstation as that is available to me. Yes. I downloaded a, a Cloudera Quick Start VM 5.7. Okay. That is VMware uh, compatible image. And I can uh, play this virtual machine. So this is around about 13, uh, I mean, 4 GB. Your Cloudera Quick Start VM is round about 4 GB, plus or minus. Okay. When you run this one, when you run this one, when I when I say here play virtual machine, what is going to happen? What is going to happen? Let me show you that. Yes. I am saying now, what is that I am doing? Play virtual machine. It's, it's going to open up the... You know, whole operating system, right? Yes. Cloudera. Yes. So let me just ask you a question. I noticed that you have 13 gigabytes of RAM. Is that necessary that much? Or because on my uh, on my laptop, I only have 16. 
your 16 gb yeah then uh, 13 you dedicate to that one right 12 or 13 you dedicate to that so that you will be able to run that one comfortably no no but that's uh, you are talking about 13 gig oh you have 13 gigabytes of ram that's what i'm saying that's a lot no wh what is your ram size 16 gb you are saying right I have 16 on the laptop, but so if I dedicate, how much uh, do I need to dedicate to a virtual machine? No, if you dedicate 12 or 13 GB to your uh, virtual machine, it runs properly. It oh, okay. Properly. Okay. So I just leave like four, just leave four gigabytes for the host operating system. It's sufficient, right? Don't run too many things on your host. That is why. You might have noticed I thought of even uh, closing my browser also. My Firefox also I just closed. You notice that? Yeah, yeah, okay. So when you are working with your cloud, uh, with, uh, when you are working with this environment, I don't think you'll be working with any other. Is it it right or not? See when you when you have planned to work with uh, this bundle, why you will be working with other things? No, no, just open the virtual machine, right? So you will be opening that virtual machine and you work with that one, and once the work is over, then you will be shut down that VM and you continue with your other work. But when you keep your virtual machine on, I don't think you will be working because the intention of starting that uh, pseudo cluster is to work with it. So I don't think you'll be you'll be needing more than four GB for your host or three GB for your host. You'll be able to comfortably, you know, make your host run in that three GB or four GB. Got it. So practically like twelve gigabytes of RAM is optimal for uh, cloud era. Yes. See, it okay. is. So what what you can do is you can uh, give uh, three to four GB to your host, and rest if you give to your bundle. The advantage part is the resource uh, crunch will not be there. As a result, your bundle will run smooth. Why you require more resources to your bundle? Because just before I mention. All the five JVM should run on the same machine. What five JVMs? Your name node, secondary name node, your data node, your job tracker, your task tracker. In addition to these, you also need to have many other things uh, running in the background to make your pseudo cluster up and running. Like Uzi should be there. Of course, pig hive and all these things comes into picture only when you access them. But Uzi is going to run all the times, and there is something called Hue, H-U-E. This is actually uh, a browser-based application called as Hadoop User Experience. It is a browser-based application where you are able to access your, where you are able to access your entire Hadoop using a user interface. I'm going to show you that now. Give me a minute. Are you able to listen to me? Yes. Thank you. 
One second. So this is going to be my this is my cloud manager. I think you noticed here. Okay. And here you will be seeing all the services up and running for me. I think you noticed here. There is something called Hue which you noticed instance of this one is yes you are there Laura? Yes. You have something called Hue Browser. One second.
is 111. Are those all different machines, right? All these are different machines. Okay. All these are different machines. Whatever you are seeing here, all these are different machines. All these are different, different machines. Whatever you are seeing, all the seven machines in the background, they're all different, different machines. We have uh, set up this one for a specific uh, activity actually. Yeah. I think you notice this is called your Hue browser. Okay. If you look into this one, you are able to use all your Hive, your Pig, your uh, job designer, you are able to use your uh, meta store and you can also have your workflows configured here you can access your uh, file system you you can manage your this is your file system i mean uh, your adobe distributed file system you remember when we typed that one here <clears throat> you got the same output you noticed accumulo data sets tmp and user are the directories at your root level you noticed Yes, yes, we only see one file system. So, when you are saying Hadoop FS hyphen LS and you give forward slash what you are getting at the terminal, same you are getting even with this one. You are also getting the same with this one, you noticed. Which means your hue, nothing but Hadoop user experience. That is called Hadoop user experience. Understand this. So, when you are working with a pseudo cluster, when you are working with a pseudo cluster, even in the pseudo cluster, whatever I am showing you now, all should be available. Then imagine how many resources are required for that to run properly. Now I think you understand, out of 16 GB, why I am asking to give at least 12 or 13 GB to your VM, now I think you have understood. Why 5 JVM should run, your uh, Hue application should run, your Uzi should run. Are you getting my point what I am saying? So all yes, yes, a lot of processes. I didn't, I didn't know that. Now all these are the process. All these are the process. Hue, I think you are seeing this Hue now. This Hue is the is the one with which you are able to access this one but interestingly when you are working with your pseudo cluster all will be running on the same machine but here this so hue is running on 111 your cloud run manager is running on 109 and your other services are running on other uh, machines i think you see on uh, 110 you have certain uh, services running on 1.9, you have certain services running. On 1.16, you have certain services running. 1.15, 1.14, 1.13, 1.12, and on 1.11, you have certain services running. So, I have set up different. All these are different, different machines. I think you are getting the point what I am saying here. This is called a fully distributed mode where I don't know whether you notice this or not. Each is having, you can see that one here. What is that? Are, are you seeing this one here? The memory that I am assigning, I think you have. Uh, yes, there. Yeah, you have the physical memory. memory. Yeah. Physical memory, you see, for all these things, you have 88 8 GB. 88 GB. For this one, we have 16 GB. And for this one also, we have 16 GB. For this one also, we have 16 GB. 
So for three machines, we have 16 GBs and the remaining we have 88 GBs when we have individually set up. Now to make uh, most of these things run, at least you know, with minimal data processing and all, we require at least 12, 13 GB memory dedicated to that so that without any glitch, you'll be able to run them. Otherwise, you are going to face those challenges. When you start your VM, you start facing a lot of challenges. Are you able to understand this? Yes. So, coming back to this, the summary. <clears throat> modes of Hadoop. How many modes are there? We have three modes. What is that? Standalone mode. Any questions you have on standalone mode? No. Pseudo cluster mode. Any questions you have? No. Fully distributed mode. Now I'm only talking about the availability. We talk, see, when we go into each, we talk in detail. That's a different story. But to just have understanding what difference exists between these three, I want you to be clear so that we'll be able to go into the details more comfortably. Right? So modes of Hadoop. Standalone we have, pseudo cluster we have, fully distributed mode we have. Okay. And uh, five demons. What are the five demons you have? Name node, a backup to the name node called secondary name node, and then we have data nodes. These are called HDFS demons. And you have MapRed demons, that is job tracker and task tracker. Now it is a time to talk about these things in detail. Whether these exist on the same machine or these are being set up on different machines, forget it. But these demons or these process should run for you in the background. And I think you notice here. You notice here. Let me take you to the host, all hosts, you see. I have master one. I have master one, I have master two, I have a manager, I have four data nodes, and I have one edge node. Keep this uh, uh, diagram in the mind. What is that I have? Two masters I have, and uh, four slaves I have, one edge node I have, one manager node I have. So I need not tell you what is the purpose of this manager node. That is a node on which I have set up my Cloudera manager. Manager node is the one on which I have set up my, I have set up my Cloudera manager. Master one and master two, you can, you can, I will expand this master one, see what is there there. What is there? HDFS. Uh, HDFS name node is there here, right? Of course, other yes, things are there. Not. For my comfort, I have set up those things because they are needed, so I have set up. Don't worry for them. HDFS name node is present on my is present on my master one. Master one. And master two. My, my, what is that? Yarn, resource manager is present, of course. Uh, for initial learning and all, we use job tracker, but the job tracker is going to be your resource manager in the coming days. 
when we move to the when we move to the new architecture called yarn based architecture this is this is a new uh, uh, development or enhancement to your hadoop cluster this should be written in capital actually yarn yet another resource negotiator that is what the meaning of yarn yet another resource negotiator that is called yarn so when you see your yarn based architecture your job tracker is replaced with resource manager your task tracker is replaced with node manager okay but their their functionality and their uh, mostly remain same but with uh, slight differences so what differences and all we see when we come to the specific level but to have understanding i want you to get into that and you see in my slaves i think you noticed i have my hdfs data node and i have my node manager node manager is nothing but your task tracker what i told you hdfs data node and yarn node manager you go to the uh, second slave hdfs data node and node manager third slave hdfs data node and node manager you go to the fourth slave hdfs uh, data node and your node manager getting my point <clears throat> yes so this gives the clear understanding to you whatever now where we need to focus where we need to focus we need to focus in understanding all these five demons what these are and what these are going to do to you okay so <clears throat> for this sake the good resource is again as i told you you go to your hadoop.apache.org as been mentioned before learn about in the learn about you go to the hdfs architecture in the hdfs architecture i think you might have already came across assumptions and goals in the case of hardware failure how it is been addressed all those things now i think you see name node and data nodes now it is going to be more clear to you where name node is been set up and data nodes are been set up on all the machines what is a file system namespace what is data replication what is block replication and the persistence of file system metadata what is the robustness and how your data is been organized all these details i think you see so this gives you the fair understanding of uh, what each daemon is doing and how those are been set up and uh, what is the background story for that one and what role they contribute to your so now i advise you to go back to the same thing what you studied before and go through this once again now you will have a better understanding compared to the earlier you will have a better understanding now don't worry we are going to discuss each thing in detail but i want you to get into this to understand somewhere you will also be finding that you know secondary name node is no more required but still we are going to set up the secondary name node uh, but it is no more required in the latest uh, uh, cluster setups because you have something called a zookeeper with zookeeper you can make your cluster to be available uh, all the times when you are able to make your cluster available all the times then you are least worried about whether backup for the name node exists or not because when your cluster is uh, this is a concept called high availability with zookeeper we are able to achieve high availability as a result when your name node itself is <coughs> available all the times when there is no chance that your name node is going to be down i don't uh, need secondary name node as a backup so slowly the secondary the role of the secondary name node is getting faded out and uh, you don't need secondary name node at all but 
we need to study things we need to study the architecture we need to study the basics that is the reason why we need to talk about those aspects in detail that is where we have your name node and the backup to the name node called secondary name node and we have a data node job tracker and the task tracker so i advise you to go through all the three hadoop modes three modes of hadoop and five demons by the time we meet in the next session so that you will be more clear in understanding these aspects and we can uh, take things forward from the five demons right so i have shown you practically also what components you will be having as part of the ecosystem and how these are i think you noticed here the cloudera manager also i have shown you what is cloudera manager and how you are going to do your activities using your cloudera manager same like you know with your hue browser okay so cloudera manager is for the admin i mean uh, hadoop admin and hue browser is for the developer see these are the two uh, uis with which uh, you are able to manage your cluster in the perspective of admin and in the perspective of uh, developer so hadoop admin is going to make use of uh, this uh, cloudera manager and hadoop developer is going to make use of that is why uh, for every user you will be having a, a separate account let it be manager so manager doesn't mean that you can uh, you are the only one so uh, under administration also you will be having hierarchy there will be depending on the size of the cluster and the type of the data and the level of complexity that uh, uh, that needs to be managed you are going to have different roles even as part of the administration a person who is dedicated for uh, backup and disaster recovery their role is to work only on those things and and a person who is working on on managing the uh, health of the cluster they will be dedicated only to that so i can create different roles we are going to see those things in detail when we come to the uh, hadoop administration so you can create different users and make those users responsible for a specific task and make those users responsible for a specific task you got the point vladan uh, got it so i advise you to go through this one by the time we meet in the next session so only three things three modes of hadoop try to understand in detail and five demons and uh, uh, the the concepts related to the hadoop ecosystem i i told you right hadoop ecosystem what components you have so just have a overview hadoop ecosystem hadoop ecosystem i mean your components like pig hive and all those things so what components we have as part of the eco that's it you need not go through uh, you know everything so what components you have as part of the ecosystem is these three things you go through so that you know we work on each thing uh, again we start working on these things separately make sense yes i will do that wonderful so we'll connect in the next session working on these things that time we'll see how we uh, work with uh, 